All right, so this has gone live on YouTube, and sorry if there's uh, anybody watching Hello, and there's a little everybody. delay because we tr are trying another uh, potential setup here. Um, so we are actually uh, testing and seeing how this goes. So I'm, again, you're I'm just excited. with us for this exploration. So <laughs> go ahead, give that a listen um, with your earbuds and just see how it sounds on your end because we want to just make sure that the audio is coming through clearly. Um, that everybody can Audio see clearly. Fine. Okay, so hopefully for everybody here on the internet, on the interwebs. Um, okay, so it can stream. I'm just testing right now to make sure the stream comes through HD. So it looks like, let me see, it's coming through on 1080. Let's see how the 1080 looks. There's I, three watching now. Hello. There's three watching. Okay, yeah. So sorry, if you're <laughs> just watching with us. Just bear with us. We are testing a new uh, system here. So we're just making sure it sounds good yeah. and looks good. Do you guys notice okay, a different right. view than usual? Yeah, so it looks like the YouTube side's looking good. So if that's going all right, hold on just a second. I'm gonna get the Facebook here going. Yeah, we're gonna okay. start the Facebook. <laughs> okay. And then uh, we can uh, we can actually tell people what you know we actually have changed up here, just testing with this new kind of video setup so you can tell a little bit about okay. what we uh, upgrade here so, so <laughs> i'm so excited to share with you all a little bit of capitalism that we got to experience uh -huh. the gopro i've never had a gopro before neither have i i don't know why i'm telling a story like this but it's exciting to me <laughs> <laughs> so i don't really i when i heard of the specs like i heard there was video stabilization but then there was other more specific things like frame rate, things like that. I just never was into cameras or taking videos or pictures. So uh, to experience it and really see that for the price of one of these, you get the quality of uh, 4K, right, recording. Right, right. For, the, um, for the regular video part, like when you're not doing live stream. Yeah, right, uh, right. not live stream. Because the live stream is not So 4K. this is 1080. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the highest, highest it can go on live stream. Interesting. Is that the internet limitation or something? Um, no, it's just GoPro's limitation. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know what I mean? At least as far as their software and the Must hardware, they, they said that that's... But I mean, that's still really incredible that this <laughs> can do all that, so... Yeah, so it's really cool. And it has built-in um, stabilization. So it... Just imagine just what you can make as an individual cool videos. And that's what we intend to do. So uh, uh -huh. this is a first kind of playing around we literally got it today we or no last night i believe we got it uh, something like that i think it was yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like how long has it been it feels like it's been forever i don't even know it anymore. feels new i mean at least right it's new. and uh yeah so um cool so even facebook is up in there awesome. yeah now facebook's a little bit higher at the moment what's up facebook yeah i'm about to share all that the facebook link now to a bunch of different people and pages just so that they're all on board and know that we are live and we hang out here a bit so yeah tell them more about the gopro what <laughs> so yeah so that's that's what gets me excited is the fact that like uh I, i've just always enjoyed growing up and i've had the pleasure of being able to enjoy pieces of the technology and see it grow and maybe that's why i'm such a geek for you know lots of things <laughs> anime <laughs> firearms like you know like how things work those are technologies it's so cool to me and i i love being able to have the um fortune enough to experience it right now hopefully that doesn't change we're trying <laughs> to not let it change i mean that's the point but um Hopefully everyone's on board with that, that we enjoy peace and prosperity. And it's really nice, you know, when you can walk around and not be afraid that a bomb is going to fall on your head. I don't want to live that. My family lived that growing up in Vietnam. It's like, that's so surreal to me. I don't even know what it's like. And I have been fortunate enough to not experience that yet in my lifetime. But we shall see, as we've talked about many times, it's, you know, all of them talking about building igloos and stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <you> know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it is an interesting time we live in for sure. And we have lots of 
seemingly paradoxical experiences, you know? Uh, if, and if, you know, you guys are here because you probably more than most people are looking at things from a different view than how it's, it's taught in public schools, in the corporate media, in mainstream movies and television. Um, and it's really interesting to see so much beauty in the world, but at the same time, see all the pain and be able to see that. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it can be a scary thing, you know, just looking for truth, philosophy is, can be scary. Um, and if you start to learn it, you know, some people like freak out. <laughs> you know, because it, it starts tearing down everything they ever knew. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, that was a long <laughs> story. But oh. that's how I feel and think. And that's what I think. So, <laughs> happy Sounds Friday, good, everybody. Yeah, happy Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's been a nice, you know, end cap off to the week. Uh, it's been a very nice week of work, I will say, and um, I love that we get to experience this. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who super chatted us before, um, crypto, flow, like uh, all these things. You guys, Patreon, you know, subscribe star. It really helps, and this is why if you've watched for the past, I don't know, three months, you'll see like things have been changing so rapidly and it's because of all the support that we've been getting and uh, we're really excited to be here and uh yeah so <laughs> but anyway this is really interesting we have a lot of things on the table and uh, it's kind of like what i was saying before about enjoying things you know while we can <laughs> doing the best we can as well to prepare that's kind of like the main thing that i've been saying is like let's enjoy and live and experience the beautiful things that are to be had in this world like this bottle of hypnotic guys so <laughs> <laughs> i like this bottle of i came in on it's the so hypnotic. wet oh my gosh oh my goodness it's okay a, a lot of all right. It was in the freezer, so it's really cold. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I wiped it down. You wiped? Oh, you wiped down the bottle. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, so is this a chain? Hypnotic? Like a gold chain? I think they right put a chain there? on there, yeah. Oh, is that a gold chain? That's you hilarious. Can't see that. I can't see the YouTube right now, so I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, no worries. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it funny. definitely is... Yeah, oh it's, it's like all these crazy recipes and stuff, but nothing, nothing bad to uh, re relax with, of course, so. Yes, so that's one thing, uh, piece of capitalism. I mean, gosh, I didn't make this. I didn't go into my backyard uh, yeah. and milk the hypnotic, anyway. <laughs> the hypnotic trick. Or get it from a well. <laughs> I relied on other people to specialize and focus on this as a company. Right. And the marketing and the branding and the design and the social media management and the customer service and the shipping. <laughs> it's a oh lot. <laughs> what do you mean? Right. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh my goodness, you... Hmm? Oh my goodness, what? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Just... <laughs> but yeah, there was a lot that went into making this drink. Which I actually thought... I think I read the history on it. it Someone was... said YouTube can see the chain. Someone, That's yeah. Great. Yeah, YouTube can see the chain. <laughs> so, um... I think it was just made by someone in New York who like, like oh, they started like they started like making it for like clubs and stuff. They like made their own special cocktail and it like <laughs> blew up. Like I think there was some viral trend with it. It's so so might as well open it up. I only ever heard and about it. And cheers to everybody who's hanging out. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Great, and of course I just like. So what piece of capitalism works. are you enjoying? Well, for one thing, if you're watching on your phone or a computer or a TV, I mean that's awesome. Or, a, what is it, a IoT device? Yeah. <laughs> Internet of Things. Internet of Things device. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember when that term came out, I was like, what's that? Okay. Whoa. All right, that made a loud sound there. That's awesome. Cheers. That was like Cheers. so, yeah. that's like what you imagine when you, Cheers to everybody, when you put yeah. that emoji. 
Oh, okay. Well, thanks. It's been a while since I've had this, you know. I, uh, you guys will have noticed there's no claws today. Yeah. Yeah. So they're all lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I look straight. Ain't no loss. I look straight at the. When, when drinking, hitting him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. So when you drink hypno because there's a chain, you turn into riffraff. But that would be really funny. <laughs> I don't even know if most people know what, who riffraff is, but that'd be cool if they did. I know. I feel like at least one person. At least one. <laughs> I think there's a chance. There's a slight chance. One person. From like, I don't know, somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> so, what's so, new? Well, I talked about the GoPro and the things that... I didn't know about it until I started to experience it mm. and how cool it is that you have this much capability in uh, for this price. I mean, like, mm -hmm. gosh, I remember those like giant, like huge, heavy cement block TVs that were like, yeah. I think they're like a thousand dollars, I think. <laughs> You're saying the CRT uh, TVs, like the, the ones that like were tubes, they had giant tubes? I'm not sure, but it had like a huge thick plastic screen, like vinyl screen. Oh, like a projection TV? Maybe. Mm. Maybe. Because <laughs> yeah, there's right. a big difference, but it's like, yeah. I, I would uh, Google it, but. Yeah. No, no it, it actually is kind of crazy <laughs> that you mentioned all the technology that's how fast things have gone. Because I was just watching some old music videos, and it's just really incredible to see how even just barely 10 years ago, yeah. people in music videos were like flexing by showing their like yeah. flip phones. Or old like, YouTube. oh yeah, check it, I'm exactly. gonna flip my flip phone. And it's like, it just, with any such short amount of time, that looks like, you know, a, you know, a poor person, old person's phone. And, and it's crazy how much the, you know, the wealth has exponentially grown and people don't even realize it. Well, that yeah. is a video we would like to do. If you would like to see it, it will be on the next video topic poll for the Patreons, subscribe starians, or float, floatins, floatians. Okay. So <laughs> if you go there, you can let me know if you want to see the what is wealth video, but also have other topics as well. But yeah, I want to see it because we did the what is money. I think we need a bigger Let's class. do the what is wealth. What is wealth? That <laughs> is a good a topic. I mean, we could talk about what is wealth and things like that. And there's not as many people who, um, I think, really understand what that means. I didn't understand. Yeah. I didn't understand until I started looking into it. Like, <laughs> I it wasn't something that was taught in skews. Yeah, in skews. It was like, here's dollars. Spend this. Like that's what people think. They're just Go like, oh, wealth. College. You have do you have bills. <laughs> like, just wealth is some guy like sitting in like a giant pile of like greenbacks, and he's like got a top hat, and he's all maniacal. Like that's their idea of oh, that's wealthy, right? Someone just yeah. swimming in Scrooge McDuck dollars. It's like they have no idea. Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, oh. it, it's like they have it's no so idea. Cold. What Do you guys about. like my shirt? It's anti-socialist. I'm sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> And I also want to explain what's on the board. You can go for that. I'm going to get some bigger cups because these are too small. <laughs> really? They're, for me, they are. Too for small. me, this is perfect. <laughs> this is the best size. In fact, if it was half the size, it'd, e it'd be even better. Nah. <laughs> okay, I'll move it here. All right, I'm back. Wow, that's ridiculous. Another glass. Is how big this is in proportion to yes. this. This is how much yeah. bigger you are to me. In this proportion. is. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, yeah. Or your stomach. A little tiny bitty glass, but um. <laughs> or your liver. No, Wait, what? Oh, I said, or your liver. My your liver. Better. <laughs> My liver ain't ain't gonna care about this one. So. Well, I have a little sip. So we're gonna do this thing where I draw on the board. <laughs> These mags. So I, <laughs> I know it looks kind of weird. Like this is really fat. Mag bag. <laughs> and and this is the thing about special specialization. Do you want me to make your mags, <laughs> or you want the guy who's like really good at making mags to make the mags? You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's gonna stamp it right. I mean, look at the difference. So anywho, I'm just putting this here because each of these hold thirty rounds, which. In some people's mind, is insane. Well, yeah, but people to me, who are also insane. I'm like, that's the bare minimum. <laughs> Am I right, guys? Like, who out there or gra gals? Um, I mean, that's cool. There's a lot of gals who shoot, and 
I've met some of them uh, through the internet. I mean, that is the common place to meet people nowadays. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I meet more true. people on the internet than I do in person. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. It's not, it's not a, a bad, bad thing. thing. I like, it's like the easiest, I mean, talk about being safe. You can choose to disassociate, you know, and they don't even know mm -hmm. you. So like, that's the part of the safety aspect. Because there's some real crazy people out there. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, <sighs> we say crazy, I mean, just really violent people. Well, like, who are course. Who really wish to do you violence, even though you've never hurt another person, even though you're not, you know, physically stealing people, defrauding people. I mean, there are people who just have their pet issue for some reason. They just can't get over the idea that they should not it's physically so use force against people for their, you know, pet issue. Whether, you know, I mean, you, you, can, take your, you can take your pick, whether it's animals... Or, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Don't get me started. I, I won't get you. Well, yeah, I'm gonna get you started actually. Oh. Okay. So anyway, so the, back to the peanuts. <sighs> so this is like what happens in public school. They're like, focus on the teacher. I'm here to teach you. Look at my really good drawings, <laughs> and pay really only good. attention to my drawings. And if you read that book, Little Timmy or Tommy or Julie. Or Eric, or Rusty, or Phil, or Daniel, or Derek. Are you reading? <laughs> I'm just reading the first names or whatever. Alaskan. Oh, if you're gonna come up with names, I'll, I'll help give you some names. Or end the Fed. Or Lever that's Guns a great 50. Name. Lever Guns 50. Oh, that's a good name too. Just seeing whoever's up in here. I really like Tree Troop. That's a good name. <laughs> so yeah, so that's that is saying. my attempt. It it looks really similar. I think it captures the essence. So pretty close. Um, yeah. I like it. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So <laughs> now that we've gone through all those uh, basics introductions <laughs> and just... random talks about technology and capitalism and stuff like that, <laughs> we can random yeah topic. we go through different events of the week. Right, like Hong Kong stuff, we can talk about that because my goodness, Sad. they actually managed to get. I mean, of course, I'm not holding my breath, but they managed to get the extradition bill officially pulled, so that was pretty I cool. I believe that, uh, at least I saw articles about mm -hmm. that today. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, so it was officially wow. in the legal sense pulled. Of course, as you know, I read the comments I immediately, trust them, and but... a lot of people were like, a little too late. Yeah. Uh, there's more demands, <laughs> so. Cutie Pie was banned from China. Right, yeah, like, that was hilarious. You know how there's a song I mean, not called... hilarious, but yeah, yeah. It's like part of the trend. I get it, it's funny. I get it. The memes are to be made, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know how there's a song called Made in China? If you don't know what I'm talking about, just look it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it's by 88 Rising. I don't think Rich, Rich Brian is in it, Rich Shudo. But, yeah. Yeah. So. But they should make it a new song. Somebody who who would make a rap song. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, called Band in China. Oh, that makes Ooh, sense. Ooh, that could be interesting. Yeah. And we wear anyway. When you That's do, not a bad idea, actually. I could see fun. us making another rap video about ba so being banned in China. So many things are banned in China. That's not a bad idea. Uh, firearms, freedom, freedom, <laughs> guns. You said firearms, guns. <laughs> I know. What's next? Handguns, rifles, shoes. <laughs> guns. Bullets. Freedom. <laughs> bacon. Oh my so goodness. I, I like, I posted the shirt today, Beer, Bacon, Guns, and Liberty, and mm -hmm. someone's like, mm -hmm. you forgot we. <laughs> oh, oh my, my goodness. Oh. There are many right. substances out there, but only some substances can. Plants. Be, grass. be had on live streams. <laughs> yeah, broccoli. Broccoli's um, great. Specialist yeah. for that too. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I think that, that um, you know, overall though, moving back to the main, you know, the things that are happening in Hong Kong um, are definitely indicative of, you know, things that I think um, we should be also thinking about that as people who are trying to promote liberty here in America, because the, their resilience is just incredible. You know, the fact that so many people just kept coming out pushing back against, you know, the police and the government and were relentless, I think was just awe-inspiring for me, at least. You know, the fact they did that until they got the thing that especially, is the bill, uh, removed, yeah. As much as I say firearms, especially considering they don't have firearms. 
Right, yeah, they're like, it's, we have umbrellas. <laughs> it's so brave. <laughs> it is pretty considering brave. Considering they don't yeah. have firearms, you know? I mean, I, I get that things are escalating. You see more Molotov cocktails, uh, more sticks, like bats coming out. Like, I get it. Things right, well, I mean, you know, so. people have been stabbed, right? Like one uh, protest was, leader yeah, got stabbed by a, um, a, ch uh, a chef who was um, uh, from mainland from China. From mainland China. Um, his guts were coming. Yeah. Oh, you can see his um, yeah. intestines. And nobody, he was just standing there. The chef had a, a, a large uh, cutlery knife, and no one fought back against him. No one did anything to him because nobody's armed. Nobody has the ability to defend themselves. And so. Who here is in a state? If that happened next to you, would you be there? Like, not letting that guy get away and continue to threaten innocent people with a knife? That guy, there was right. a picture of him. He was just standing there. He was just standing there. there. He was still standing there. No, not, no one took him down. Like, yeah. it was just so hard to see. So, I, I commend their bravery. I love it. I love the spirit, of course. And um, it's just, uh, I can't help but tear up a lot, too, mm. when I read about it. Yeah. No, and not only that, like in terms of uh, awe inspiring a uh, foreign uh, events. Wait, you know... can I just pause mm -hmm. for a moment mm -hmm. to just finish my thought? Yeah. <laughs> I just can't help but think of my family. Mm -hmm. For one thing, they sound like my family. <laughs> they speak the language. Well, they, yeah. For a second thing, they are Asian. very close <laughs> to Vietnam, right? Where everything went down in Cambodia and mainland China. Like, and, you know, it's from mainland China. I'm Chinese. <laughs> so, right. It just reminds me so much of what my family went through, and they're literally facing that similar communist threat, but at mm. a level of force that they that we haven't seen before. So, um, but at the same time, we have tools that we've never seen before. The internet, the fact that we can live stream with you guys here, and you guys are hanging out, and you meet more people on the internet nowadays, I guess. <laughs> so uh, I feel hopeful um, I feel all the things so mm. here we are one day at a time trying to live feeling the pain as it comes feeling the nice things and the beauty as it comes so thanks for hanging out with us right <laughs> so yeah on the note of um, I'm gonna get a jacket yeah, yeah. on the note of um, people you know basically resisting governments <laughs> yeah, um, I thought it was pretty fascinating that uh, the that is the Mexican cartels, uh, specifically um, the one with El Chapo, um, was able to you know escalate violence enough to the point where they uh, released uh, El Chapo's son, and I thought that was uh, quite fascinating, quite instructive because uh, you know. It really showed how if people are disarmed, they can't really do anything. But the people who are, of course, the uh, the criminals in this case, the people who are actually you know doing bad things, it's just you know bad guys on bad guys, you know government versus a, a violent mafia. Um, it really showed that uh, you know people could take on and, and make things very difficult for the government, and some people could um, you know meaningfully uh, work together to resist. You know, even even Mexico's uh, army. So that was pretty wild to see, and a good reminder that, you know, people who are willing to you know stand up for themselves could resist an onslaught and could um, effectively mount a defense that would be enough to push back against state agents who are also armed. So I thought that was kind of fascinating as well. Um, obviously, it's kind of uh, you know concerning that. <laughs> That this level of uh, violence is, is still going on, of course, because that's horrible for the people in Mexico. That they're they're disarmed. Um, they literally don't have uh, any meaningful uh, gun rights. They have that one, you know, gun store in Mexico City, and you have to go through a bunch of red tape. And even then, you know, may, you may not get approved. And if you do, it's some small caliber, worthless, you know, pea shooter handguns. So. I mean, it, it's really bad for the people there. So I understand why uh, many people would not want to be there, or live there near the cartel violence, at least. Um, but it's a good reminder for those of us who are still here to not give up those uh, fundamental rights. Because if you do, as you've seen in Mexico, as you've seen in Hong Kong, you are very powerless against a very uh, Orwellian, you know, very evil and violent uh, regime.
whether you know it's the Chinese government trying to exert control over the Hong Kong, uh, you know, government that's there, and and the people directly, or you know the Mexican government and all their cronyism and uh, you know they're basically taking everything you could possibly imagine from the Mexican people, their their fundamental rights, their you know, speech rights, their gun rights, and then leaving them helpless and defenseless against the cartels. So it's uh, it's very uh, both concerning but also instructive to look at that. So. I'm just going to take a look at a couple of comments here really quick before she gets back. Um, so here, someone said, I can't wait to get my voluntary swag. Yes, me too. Still working on the Ooh, comic and stuff. So um, if they support the comic, they probably oh, the got, comic. you know, yes. something. They could have got a shirt, could have gotten... The book, cards, Yeah, all cosplay kinds of things. Cards. So. By the way, guys, that's another thing I've enjoyed. Cosplay. So thanks. <laughs> thanks for the opportunity to cosplay. I really, I, I enjoyed playing house when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, some things never change. You ever like go back to like family and think that? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, for me, I do because I, obviously, the longer I stay away from my family, the more I exponentially grow. <laughs> yeah, and then you go back and you're like, whoa, did I just go back in time to my childhood? What right, you... yeah. It's. <laughs> When you're on that path, as many people kind here watching you know. are, you know, and, and you're working on yourself, your self-knowledge. Good for you, by the way. Yeah. So proud of you. I was there, still there, still working on it. <laughs> Wait, who are you talking to? What? Uh, <laughs> who am I talking to? I don't even know. Everybody. Anymore. Anyone who specifically gets what we're talking about right now. Oh, oh okay. gosh. I hope that's at least one person. Uh, there probably is at least <laughs> several people because... Um, this guy, Andrew here says he found your breakdown for how the left tries to undercut your factual statements with false premises quite useful. <laughs> so, right. That's a, it's a good point. Like some of the things we try to do here is we try to promote using reason and evidence and helping to cut through uh, a lot of the lies and deceptions. So exactly. Every form of statism imbues sophistry, basically trying to deceive you into thinking they're telling you the truth. Or the reality when they're not you know mm. like it's moral for me to coerce from you it's moral for me to throw your grandpa in jail because he had some medical weed you know yeah it's messed Seri up seriously ross Ulbert. um i just gosh julian assange oh that came out this week right so there's assange right that's that was really terrifying like just to hear that that situation with assange uh you know before the uh, UK magistrate because they're talking about extradition and just the fact that he could barely speak it was very clear you know from several people who reported from the event that he had been under some kind of torture um, maybe even poisoned actually I mean I, many people speculate that he could have been poisoned while he was um, you know being held and that's that's just horrible it's something that is very scary because it shows again how the government is literally willing to um, murder people and then and lie murder about people it to your face right. over and over even when the evidence is so questionable right they just continue to call you names throw ad hoc uh, say that you believe things i mean they employ it all don't they in the corporate media oh of course just they like they employ it all just like the with the um... the everything the sophistry it's there and uh, once you start seeing it you can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the rabbit trail. <laughs> right. Well, it reminds me because the of, rice field with the rabbit trail. Oh my goodness. Either one. With um, Joe Rogan this week, you had Snow. Yeah, Snow yeah, on there. That. Wow. And he that. mentioned the Clapper line. Um, you know, he he literally he was the head of uh, you know, the NSA, and he literally lied before Congress saying they didn't spy, they didn't collect Americans' data at all. And that's just was such a flagrant lie and he didn't get charged for anything and it's just like it just shows you that these people can literally just lie straight up and just get away with it about spying on every single american by doing a full take on everyone's communications and social media it's very scary yeah yeah so here we are guys. so it's interesting and uh you know you're mentioning el chapo's son and how Mexico, uh, the Mexican government, mm -hmm. waged a drug war as well. Yes. And it right. has led to the creation of all, just like, kind of like in America, all these gangs, mm -hmm. these really 
scary, violent, powerful games. It's right. no different than many governments with their own <laughs> initiation rituals and rules and hierarchies. Right. <sighs> and uh, missions and following orders. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh! Uh, Naomi Brockle, hi! <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. But anyway, I really like your video. So, um, Satoshi. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, girl. yeah. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, as you know, I'm Chinese and Viet. So, technically, because I really enthuse and try to speak Japanese, sing Japanese songs, watch Japanese <laughs> Weed movies. Out. <laughs> Wait, let me get to the punchline. That punch. I weave out. So <laughs> you're right. Um, so anyway, you made a great video, Naomi. I really liked it. I weaved out when I watched it and <laughs> and there was Japanese even. It was great. It was Should have gotten radio play. <laughs> if it was ANCAP Sam, maybe Liverland Radio. Yeah, Liverland Radio. Vit, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Play it on the next Liverland radio. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's too funny. She said she liked that, the boyfriend video, which is the one with, with <laughs> Carrie Wedler, where you... Oh, yes. Which, if you haven't seen her, Ray, definitely go <laughs> and watch that. It's on so the uh, it. Philosopher <laughs> channel here, as well as on Carrie's um, Facebook channel. So, it's a hilarious video that just kind of highlights what the state's really like through the lens of imagine if they were your boyfriend you know <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's it was funny. really fun to do yeah. i i really enjoyed getting to talk to carrie uh, in fact that was the first time wait okay <laughs> naomi said she wants to weep together <laughs> wow okay <laughs> all right slow down <laughs> If you, want to, yeah, if you want to do a weeb rap, we can make that happen. That's that, that's within the purview of things that we have the capacity to do. So just slide up in her DMs. I love it. When I when I was on the Liberty Dolls uh, show, which was awesome, that was another yeah. thing that happened last week. Mm -hmm. um, no, two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> Give or take. Give or take. Um, I love that she asked me about anime. And she mentioned an anime, and I was like, ah, I don't know that one. And I was like, what about this? And she's like, no. She said, this will date myself. So. Oh, I know. I was like, no, it's okay. And I'm like, you're right. You're ancient. No. <laughs> I was like, it's okay. It'll date me too. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Good times. So, wow. Welcome. Thanks for being here. And that's cool. Uh, I really like what you do on the Contra Cruise. I think. Oh, yeah, I want to go on the Contra Cruise. Sometime. I want to go. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know, again, Contra Cruise <laughs> is basically a cruise related to economics, but it's really just. Um, Libertarians hanging out. Tom Woods like party. Like us, right? And, Tom Woods party. <laughs> and Bob Murphy. And Bob Murphy. Karaoke. Karaoke. <laughs> really well. Gosh, he can rap. We did actually see wow. Bob Murphy karaoke in person, so. He can we can rap. confirm the man he, he can does rap. he does have the capacity. Yes. I believe that's how he serenaded his current wife. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quote me on that. I that's assume. true. His wife was very nice, actually. I was I was uh, yeah. I was impressed how he did. He did well for himself, so I was very impressed. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people at Mises U were. Yeah, yeah, Mises U is great. If you haven't, um, well, some people might not know what Mises U is, but basically, Mises U is an Austrian economics conference. Um, it's like a, a week-long seminar where you get to interact with great scholars in economics, law, philosophy, um, talking about Mises' work, his uh, treatise on economics with human action, and um, Rothbard and so forth. Oh, I so, love it. It, it, yeah. it is so fun. It's like college. Early morning classes and everything. In fact, <laughs> just kidding. The only thing missing is I didn't choose the schedule. The yeah. Because I would be like, nah, we do it nighttime classes. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. a night owl. <laughs> yeah, really. And what, the best part was like when, when Judge Napolitano's like, we were ha we were hanging out with Judge Napolitano. He's like, oh, wait, aren't you supposed to be in my class? We're like, oh, wait, we're supposed to be in your class. Like, whoops, we missed that one. And, but he's like, all right, come back tomorrow. Like, okay, we'll see you tomorrow, Judge Nap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a and good then we showed back that up. That's a good attempt. <laughs> yeah. That was too funny. Yeah. Mm. You never got the kisses. I yeah. Judge Knapp did not offer me any kisses, so I was I was sorely disappointed, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. Who doesn't want to be kissed <laughs> by Judge Knapp, right? 
Um, yeah, what was that? Uh, not <laughs> oh, I thought you were like, I'm okay. Like, huh? I'll shake his hand. Well, that's though. true. Yeah, well, we don't we don't need any more like Epstein's and and Weinstein's nap violations on the by Italian. The nap, judge, <laughs> by Judge Nap. Oh my, yeah. I saw two people at Mises U, by the way, random. Two who people? Were, I think there's more than that. Who, specifically, who were fans. <laughs> and they said on the back of their shirt, one of those days, not every day, they didn't yeah. wear the same shirt every day. Yeah. It said, nap for president. Mm. And I said, why not? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm not into politics and I don't deal I'm with that. I, would, I wouldn't be thing. unhappy about the fact, but. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to shift gears and yeah. like rally. I'm just yeah. going to keep doing my thing, yeah. promoting philosophy. And hey, if people apply the principle, the philosophy that I advocate for and the ideas I share in the discussions we have, mm-hmm. the principles that we value, and they so happen to say, okay, you know what? I think Judge Knapp meets ho- hopefully most of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he did say it like. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It was really fun to go. It was really fun. I recommend it. I highly yeah. recommend. It. So yeah, you can just look it up and uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you go to That's to cool. Mises U again, just there are people, of course, like Judge Knapp and his constitutional law class. You can get into. I mean, it was a lot of fun because I've already I actually already taken all the constitutional law classes, stuff like that. You know, from, from law school and things like that. But it was, it was still very informative and enriching to go through his class. It was a lot of fun. It wasn't he, he unfortunately for us he didn't do Socratic method. He kinda just slammed us with information because I don't know why he just like felt he didn't have enough time because of something. I don't know. But it was the best because that was just getting to listen to him and not like hear other people speak. So I was like I came here to listen to him and that worked out. <laughs> yeah. Hey can I just say okay, I, I I'm I know I'm taking this totally off the books here. Off yeah. the books? What books? What what? Off the charts. What, chart. Wait, what? Oh. Okay, I'm just going to change the topic. Oh, okay. So I can't help but read all these comments by people like that I've seen before, and I'm like, oh my gosh, God, there's a guy that comments. No, that's just his name. <laughs> Naomi Rockwell. <laughs> I think I can say that. Yes. So- Technically, I mean, it is public, so every, anyone can see their name there, so... Or Sato- yeah. aka Satoshi Nakamoto. Oh, Fellow yeah. weeb girl. I love it. That's great. Yeah. And I just feel like, you know what? One day we're going to be able to have VR if the mm. government stays out of the way and lets the free market, as in people voluntarily, voluntarily <laughs> trade <laughs> and innovate and create and specialize. And well, I think create. those in the state want VR personally. Because they, it's just something they can tap into. It's the same yeah. thing with everything else. They want, they so we they need like the anonymous VR. Yeah, so anonymous people, VR. Is there different. are programmers working on that. They're yeah. like, you know what? We're gonna try to make software where you can get the best of both worlds: privacy and the cool stuff. So let's try to incentivize that. Yeah, and there are people like <laughs> you know Kingsley out there, Kingsley Edwards working on Float, right? He's trying to bring social media to the crypto world and up some privacy, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yes. Um, in fact, I really, it's really cool that on Float, currently, my only subscriber is a Kingsley of Float. <laughs> the guy who created the company. <laughs> yeah. He, but it's because they bought over uh, Bitbacker. Like, yeah. that's a, that's an important fact. That and that's where I was yeah. before, if you guys remember. Yeah. I was like, oh, check out Bitbacker. Right. But they were acquired by Float and they took over. Right. And I was able to easily migrate. They even built that. Um, mm-hmm. Whoever developed that, I'm kudos to you. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> he. Uh, he. He's done a good job. And you know, I love we've been it. talking back and forth. I love the there. interface too. Mm-hmm. I heard it was built with Angular. Oh. Nice. <laughs> See, true uh, true programmer <laughs> coder skilled knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I give you There's probably tons of programmers here in the thread because it's a big, yeah. big uh, typifying, uh, you could say, uh, career is many libertarians happen to be either techie, like <laughs> IT people, software engineers, computer scientists, because they value logic and reason, right? Like if you're working with that realm, you, you very much have to think about logic and reason and libertarian is very l- logical. Yeah. Naomi said she wants to hang out with y'all. You look like you're all having fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. That reminds me too, like, um, 
you know, on, on some of the things that... Oh, wait, we, sorry. And she agrees that Bob Murphy has quite a voice. Bob Murphy he's does have quite... He's, a, he's a, a beautiful man with a beautiful voice. So... <laughs> I have a video of them interacting. I really enjoyed it. I have a, a secret video. Oh, I should post that to behind the scenes. Yeah, definitely post it behind the scenes. Okay, so. I got to yeah. post this behind the scenes video. I didn't get enough footage of me and Dave Smith. He was at Mises U. And I... <laughs> I tried so hard to talk. I to argued him. with him for forty-five minutes straight. <laughs> <laughs> I went up to Dave Smith immediately and was like, "So, Dave Smith." <laughs> and I'm over here like, ready? "Please, I just want to compliment the guy." Yeah. Gosh. I'm like, "I gotta get you back on the path of liberty." <laughs> and I'm over here like, "Let me just try some nonviolent communication and see if we can all just be friends." That was fun though. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Hopefully, fun. he doesn't hate us or resent us. Because we, we just went straight up in. We're like, all right, Dave. All right. Well, chop, chop. Dave, if you're out there, here's a, uh, what's it called? Like yeah. a pea shot? Pea <laughs> shot. Diplomacy shot? Yeah, diplomacy. <laughs> uh, anyway, I pissed off enough. I really, I, I enjoyed the conversation in the end. Um, yeah. So, but oh, I yeah, have it was good. a it was funny good. And He does good stuff. It's not like he doesn't do good stuff. He does great stuff. So, but, um. Basically, so I was saying, like, with, the, you know, oh, hang out some time and stuff like that. It, it got me thinking, you know, actually that just really sparked something in my mind. Because obviously with the Red Flag Reality Project that we're working on, which, again, anybody who doesn't know or is missing out, Red Flag Reality is a project that we're working on to specifically push back against the gun grabbers um, with producing some videos that are, uh, you know, really geared toward the same kind of communication tactics that a lot of these gun grabbing groups like Sandy Promise are doing. Um, but we were thinking about what we could do for cool or events. Or softest. Or, in or softest in general, yes. Because what do they appeal to? Not Right, like they're just, just pure emotions, emotions. And, and things that don't even add up or make sense compared to what exactly. So I was thinking through like different things that we could do. And the Bob Murphy thing just got me thinking, wait, we could do like a karaoke event. Like like a meetup for karaoke as like for supporting the film. That would be a lot hey, of fun. Hey, it worked out. Right? For, Korean hey, karaoke. I don't have to reinvent <laughs> the wheel, guys. I follow the Chinese manufacturing model, okay? I don't believe in IP. I say if you want to innovate, as long as you're not stealing mm -hmm. people's literal property and you're not hurting anyone. Right. Why, why can't you be like, huh, I'm going to figure out how that's made and figure out the technology mm -hmm. and make it. There are people who become that handy and like interested in building something. So mm. anyway, I don't believe in IP. So. Yeah, yeah, neither do I. It's, you know, but, but otherwise people can use contracts to, of course, create privacy and stuff like that. It's important to just note like how that comes to contracting. But intellectual property is basically, <laughs> I think Stephen Kinsella said it very well, um, even though we spent, <laughs> I think, like oh, an wait. hour and a half debating about whether someone you said hi Hitler. from the UK. Hello. Hello from That's UK. That's very late. Um, Stephen Kinsella <laughs> said, you know, basically out. IP <laughs> is what Cheers. through the government lets you control other people's property that's not yours. So it's, you know, that's the fundamental issue with IP is that it's basically saying I can use force against you for how you use your fully, your uh, wholly yeah. owned private property. And that's really what underpins And that. when you apply the principle mm -hmm. down to all the scenarios, mm -hmm. because that's what you're advocating for, like the law, okay, do you right. apply that consistently, right? Okay. So like, what if someone's making a fork? Why can't yeah. somebody who was the first to release <laughs> to market and promote it or whatever, or just have the government approve, or they have a friend in the state, so the right. state intentionally approves their permit first. Yeah. Or gags them. Mm -hmm. And just takes their invention and tells them, hey, you can't talk about your invention. I mean, compared to what? People are like, oh, in an anarchist society, ah, like crazy things would happen. I'm like, look at the government. Right. That's crazy things <laughs> happening, guys. Do I have to call it out for you? Winnie the Pooh is banned in China. <laughs> PewDiePie. <laughs> it's just, um, it's not. Can be pretty nuts, yeah. I mean, and that's a good point that, you know, when I, very often when people like try to make critiques about like liberty and having more human freedom and they say, well, the government needs to control this or that, it's, it's always a compared to what? Because when you really look down at what the government actually does, yeah. yeah, you could say there's some good things in terms of, okay, they 
you know, police might catch some robbers and might catch some murderers and stuff like that. And of course, that's a good act in, in and of itself. And it's made up of individuals. So right. there are people who just joined and they literally have noble reasons to be in the force, like whatever. Right. They, they had they good genuinely intentions. Believe. Right. But if you've heard a lot of veterans, some veterans come out and they're like, whoa, I was not expecting that. And they're like, what the heck was that? All the authoritarianism, like the erosion of you as an individual, the trying to get you to just sacrifice yourself for the collective, you know. Or more so for, good. you know, global banker wars in order to keep funding the military industrial complex. <laughs> that that as well too yeah it, it's it's very fascinating it's um it's it's something that i think a big i think a big hurdle for a lot of people and you know this is part of my own journey you know what coming from a neoconservative background to becoming libertarian and voluntarist it's the information right you have to get that piece of information to somebody that they've never been exposed to that makes them say wow i didn't know that what else don't i know and if you can get to that one piece of information that unlocks it, it's the right, it's the rabbit hole. And that's that's what's hard. It's different people have different rabbit holes of that one piece of information that makes them question, okay, what else do I know? Do and I without know? a consistent framework for discerning truth from falsehood, it can get scary out there and confusing. Mm. To sift through all the different assertions being thrown at you because you you live in this world and gosh you interact with people every single day and everybody is trying to convince you of their views right including me even people every who are egoists who are like oh i'm just doing what i want or neil is like oh okay yeah yeah i'm just you know you're just a spook you're just whatever nothing it's so stupid because it's like by their very act of arguing and their very act of trying to talk to you and and, and seek significance and validation they are through performative contradiction showing that they don't believe themselves to we be nothing or you know there whatever. was a lecture on that at mises hue yeah by um, who gave that because i don't remember oh oh because that's different from he, hans herman hopps it uh, wasn't hans but he it was his hans. yeah his student yeah his student yeah but it's a little different from what i'm talking about but yeah oh that sounds great it, it was interesting i'm not it a personal this, fan of it because i think there's a better stronger was. argument but yeah do you know what it is? What was argued or no? I'm just trying to remember his name. I'm so sorry. I, I can't remember bad. his name either. It was some weird gem in But I, if I look on my phone, which is sharing the live stream right now. Yeah. So. Ain't gonna work. But in any case, the Ain't point being work. is that the, um, the concept of performative contradictions, the concept of showing someone their hypocrisies is so powerful a tool for getting someone to realize that what they believe, you know, when actually put to the test doesn't really match the, the reality of outcome that maybe they were thinking it would lead to. And that, you know, cuts across all different types of belief sets when you actually get them down to those basic principles. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, there's no such thing as absolute truth. Right, like that's an absolute truth Is statement. That absolute so that you're right. It's like things that you know they're they're just logical contradictions. So you don't exist, but I'm trying to yeah. uh, convince you yeah. that you don't exist. <laughs> therefore, acting right. as if you do exist. Exactly. It's like whether it's true or false, so, you're acting in contradiction. Gosh, to it, so. forgive me. Yeah. <sighs> if somebody knows his name, that luck <laughs> just go just go oh. on basis and look at him. But. He actually applied that principle, he was just talking about uh, socialists, I believe, or maybe just status in general about property rights. Mm -hmm. um, it was fun to talk about. I enjoyed talking about it with you. Mm -hmm. We would just go to lunch. You know, basically, it's, it's lectures. You take breaks, 15-minute breaks in between the lectures, and then you have a lunch yeah. outside. Where there's no air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. Please use me, a colder mug. Y'all, y'all, got to get a sponsor <laughs> for some a air conditioned, <laughs> air conditioned eating areas. Yeah. I know a... we're being petty, but you know. I, I'm sorry. It was. It got a little hot out there. I'm not being petty. It's just <laughs> my customer sweating. sentiment. I'm just <laughs> we weren't customers, honest. but I'm just being real. Okay, I won't sing anymore until we get uh, Article 17, 18. Okay. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right. Someone said, what is the blue stuff? And I just want to say, it's called hypnotic. Right. It was created by somebody in New York, we believe. We could look it up. You could look it up too. Right. 
It's like hypnotic, not spelled in the traditional sense. It's HP, so no Y, anywhere to be seen. N-O-T-I-Q. Hypnotic. It was also popularized in a <laughs> song, in a rap song, which I can't sing because <laughs> you know what's going to happen Because then. of IP. Yeah. We all know what will happen Because there. the government says yeah. <laughs> uh, piracy is not, oh wait. Or is he a victim? No, well, the government says say? piracy is not a victimless <laughs> crime. What they say. With, See, a big, they with a big eagle going, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, <laughs> oh, right, with the eagle. I love how like, the old ones now they're like, would you download a car? And it's like, now you can because of 3D printing. Yes, I would download a car. There was a guy who, who did, who 3D printed a car for his Oh, son. yeah. I mean, not all the parts, but like the Lamborghini body, or whatever. He like got the 3D <laughs> parts for a larger figure. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't think he did the engine, right? Like, it wasn't everything. It wasn't all the pieces. It was just the frame, I believe. I believe, yeah, it, because you need metal. Sounded, and that's, you have like to machine that. out the metal, so there's no way. But the body yeah. itself, like the actual, because it already is fiberglass, like, usually in, in the actual body normally, so, <laughs> you know, some type of 3D big printed, uh, 3D printer that's on a, you know, industrial scale is not that bad to do compared to fiberglass, though. So. <laughs> yeah. But uh, someone actually said, Brian Brown here said, for any political argument, would you say you voluntarily pay for that, right? So that's a great question, right? When it comes to government services, services, um, you know, well, would you pay for that anyway? And you know what I mean? For most things that actually don't involve. Voluntarily and you know, selectively. If right. I could break it down, like, but I can't. It's just a huge lump sum taken out. I have no control of where it goes. I can't, I can't say, hey, only don't put any over here. Right. Like, I don't want to drop any bombs. I don't want any in the welfare state. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, yeah, and also beyond that, the more important thing is when you look at the reality of what the spending has been used for, I mean, it's been just used for basically blowing people up overseas <laughs> because the government... And locking people in prison. Is, yeah, is there, 23 so trillion in debt. There's so things things on. It, yeah. It's all the waste. Yeah. All the people who they fund, who are so, talk about immoral, like these people, I post a steak picture and they're like, hey, you need to not eat that steak. You, <laughs> are you famished from iron? Well, too bad. Drink a pill. Don't eat that juicy, delicious medium rare steak. Yeah. I will say, yeah, the veganism <laughs> thing always gets me because And I'm like, it's... oh my gosh. We're trying to minimize <sighs> violence, and you're advocating for a philosophy that would justify more violence amongst humans. I literally asked somebody yeah. uh, who was like, hey, why don't you debate veganism? I'm like, been there, done that, but here <laughs> we go again. Okay, I, all right. And then <laughs> I was like, okay, fundamentally, if you think it is justified for someone to murder or imprison a family, you know, whatever, they're from China, whatever country you want, Okay. <laughs> Any race, think about it. anything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they've been having chickens, cows for generations in their family. My family did in Vietnam. They were farmers. They had plants too, so they had, you know, uh, omnivore life. But they had the chickens, the rabbits, the dogs. I never yeah. had a dog, okay? <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just saying. But I might. <laughs> What? Yeah. Whoa. I draw the line at duck. Okay? In alley. Depends on how far the boogaloo goes. And deer. <laughs> Speaking of deer, there's a video. Okay, I, I'll, I'll bring that up later. Yeah. You're going to go on rabbit trails? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> well, I, I won't anymore. It's okay. Oh, you're going to go on deer trails? <laughs> with, the, with the video from New York? I uh, enjoy talking about, um, anyway, the family, so the, the, um, the situation. When I talk to vegans, this is the situation I go through because fundamentally it's about this, okay? Whether or not I associate with somebody is what are they justifying when it comes to violence against other humans? So mm -hmm. this person was like, I said, do you think it's justified to, um, like in order to be consistent that the non-aggression principle, the principle that you shouldn't initiate force uh, or violate the consent of any human being should be applied to an all animals as well. And people have different definitions of animals. Like some people, 
It's like, oh, it's just central nervous system. Other people, it's like, it's just how I feel. It's how cute the animal or the bug is, whatever. <laughs> okay? It's not consistent. <laughs> and anyway, I just say like, okay, in order for you to be consistent that it must apply to animals, you must therefore think it's justified to murder or imprison a family, a human family that's been breeding cows or whatever animal for years and killing them and getting materials, hide, clothing, um, you know, blankets, like all that, all of those things, milk, meat. Um, if you think that's justified, I have a problem and I don't want to associate with someone like that. That's dangerous. That's somebody whose philosophy is advocating for violence even more. We're trying to minimize it over here. And you're like, oh, let's give the state more reason to like, <laughs> violate people. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Let's, uh, t uh, by the way, anyone trying to make any libertarian constitution over here, form a new one, uh, let's just like keep it simple, okay? Self-ownership, property rights. <laughs> okay. Maximizing consent, minimizing the initiation of violence. And uh, let's just leave out, you know, inconsistent ethical rules. Like, um, it is wrong for you to kill an animal for food. And uh, it's justified to murder you and uh, anyone else who does it too. Like, I think that's wrong. So, that's where I'm at. <laughs> right, yeah. It's one of those things where it's like... I want peace amongst humans, first and foremost. Yeah. And, uh, you know... We live to the we pen land to the exclusion of animals. We keep animals out of our homes. Most people try to at least, and you know you wouldn't want rats to run all over your place and eat your food and take over, right? Hopefully, anyone, <laughs> most people. <laughs> okay, not me. So, yeah. Right. Exactly. It's like one of those things where when you look at the evolutionary history of humans and the development of their larger brain. You know, you can't ignore the fact that it was a part of, uh, you know, eating meat that allowed that to happen in the first place, that type of development. And many people who hold this, you know, kind of standard, they try to say, oh, the NIP applies to animals. I mean, again, you by that standard, unless you're going to commit special pleading, unless you're going to make it not a principle, but rather just your subjective preference that you, you know, shift the goalposts for, then you'd have to argue that all carnivores should be killed, of course, because... If you think animal death, like forcible animal death is wrong, you know, unethical, then those are all creatures that are worthy of death. And of course, who are the, you know, militant vegans going after? Are they going after all of the carnivores that are killing animals day in, day out? No, they're going after or humans. Or other humans? Right. What about all the humans who are killing other humans? Oh, the state? Where's the armed resistance there? But you're over here, like, trying to tell me somebody who's advocating for literally as much... Like, where do I advocate for violence? Anywhere? No. <laughs> Self-defense. Like, it's always, like, about love and nonviolent communication. Like, that's the focus, you know? <sighs> so. So, yeah, exactly. It's one of those <laughs> things where it's, like, if you actually take a look at the nature of how people act, there is no possible way for you to not live in modernity and not affect animal life and displacement from... The fact that roads are built to, you know, buildings are built, all those different things cause animals to be displaced and die. Even mass industrial uh, farming of vegetables, vegetation, of course, animals die in that process. So the very nature of existing and evolving and, and improving the human condition involves animal death. And there's just a you know, select group of people who wish to use violence, again, physical initiations of violence against other human beings for of course, relying on animal death in order to better their existence. And, you know, the fundamental problem with this, of course, is that that is excusing or rationalizing an initiation of force against other humans who have not themselves initiated violence, that is, physical initiations of violence against other people and their property. So, really, you know, this is completely antithetical to establishing and building peace as among humans. Um, and already it's so tough trying to just get gives peace a pathway to violate a human being i'm like right you really would murder a family and this guy responded i mean just his name libertarian vegan that's all it was, it was just like, yeah okay <laughs> he's like yeah how is that inconsistent and i'm like no you're applying it consistently i'm just saying that's where we have a problem we have different values i find that murder like if you killed or in prison i call that kidnapping and murder and i would use force to defend that family who you're who you're trying to kill or imprison 
for having cows. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, there are people out there who are like, hmm, I'd rather save a dog over a baby. Like, I've, I've heard, I've seen that in the comments. I mm -hmm. mean, it's just different value judgments, all right? And I just recognize that, hey, if there was <laughs> a time where you could, it was, you know, uh, where you can't, global trade breaks down, you know, you're, you're forced to just live off whatever's near you. Uh, hopefully there's some fish around or some squirrels <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, but if you can't get the tofu or the vitamin pills that you need, I don't want that guy who's going to shoot me in the head for trying to get a squirrel. Like, I'm just trying to eat, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I'm. that's all I'm saying. You're not invited to <laughs> that camp where you... <laughs> would kill yeah, somebody. Yeah, I so, mean, it's very, it's very dangerous. But if somebody uh, would have replied and said, no, I wouldn't kill you, I'd be like, okay, well then just kind of re-examine that, you know what I mean? Like, just recognize you have different standards for animals even now. So, as I know, like, I'm not saying let's violate animals and torture them. No, I, like, what, is, what does that mean? Like, cause them pain, be sadistic? No, I'm not talking about that. Like, But even that shouldn't be what's considered, you know, a nap violation of itself. And the reason why is because, again, what is at play here? You're having one person use physical force against another person who has not harmed the body or property of another. And so while it seems, just you know, socially radical... socially ostracize them. You find that gross? That works. Just, just be like, okay, that's gross. Okay, it's subjective, sure, but you're asserting your freedom to associate. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no violation there. And that's just what the recourse I see. I, I don't want to violate people for that um just want to focus more on the if they're hurting humans or not so. right yeah it, it's something that again if you don't take a serious stand and a hard line on that it really actually does lead to an escalation of violence against humans and essentially what that boils down to is, is an anti-human mentality it's a mentality that some groups of people wish to cause harm to other groups of people for simply subduing the land and turning it towards something that increases human flourishing. And this is something that, again, you cannot take as a principle and hold consistently because by its very nature, you would have to condemn all of the different creatures that eat other animals. Lions, and not only that, cats. there would be a very big problem with uh, trying to hold that standard as an exception to those animals because if you held it as an exception, then again, you're ignoring the fact that the genetic drift of those creatures was allowed to be fostered in the first place because of growing a dependency. So in other words, genetically, if you go to the genetic, hist genetic history, you're validating the dependence that happened evolutionarily. So it it's kind of like this self-fulfilling prophecy that if you excuse carnivores, well, then you're just validating carnivores into the future and you're not really against animal suffering, you're just special pleading. So that's really what it boils down to. It's an absurdity. And of course, if people want to encourage more ethical ways of farming in terms of just how animals are treated for, you know, whatever better meat is, that there's nothing wrong with advocating that. There's nothing wrong with, with saying those things, but there's a stark difference between, hey, I want to help people think of better ways to farm and have, um, you know, livestock being kept and stuff like that versus, oh, I think, you know, I should be able to go punch a guy just because he wants to have chicken for dinner or I should be able to kill a person because they're going to hunt deer. You know what I mean? We are talking Most about fundamental species. differences yeah. in ethical foundations. We're, you know, we're not talking about preferences here. We are talking about fundamental stark differences in your ethics or morality. And that's just not acceptable. There's no way, there's no in between on that when it comes to whether someone thinks that they can use violent force against you. That's my two cents. That's great. <laughs> I love it. Somebody said in Alaska, we natives have subsistence. <laughs> I just imagined fish. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Caribou. Yeah. I mean, every um, I one of the things I like to watch is like. I mean, since I was a kid, like, National Geographic and, like, the cool animal videos. I do enjoy seeing other creatures and just observing that. Um, so, I'm more of the opinion of just, like, try to keep animals away, but as soon as they trespass, you know, like, if you have to, and they're diseased or something, you have to take care of it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, that's another thing is, I mean, these topics it, are yeah. so 
diverse and robust in the information that so many people have been so domesticated they don't even know how to approach this con the concepts because so they don't even understand that if you have a certain population like a deer population that's going you know way above levels because if you don't control against that you're gonna have deer walking out onto roads and suddenly people are dying because they're hitting deer you know that are coming out in the highways and stuff like that so you have to have means to even stop those kind of events from happening for yeah. people to not At least die closures. you know so it's it's right. very important that you know there are mechanisms to deal with that whether it's a deer walking the road or rats you know coming in infesting your house whatever it is you know i mean there's there's just so many different aspects to human existence and the human experience that many of these people are so narrow-minded too and largely because they've yeah. had a very privileged life of being so wealthy and being born to such great riches that they even had the time to think about like not that kid having from food. Long Island who was like, but yeah, being really rude to this guy and his dad, uh, and the kid's dad was with him, being rude to the guy in the car as well, who just hunted, um, I think a deer, and he had a deer on the hood of his car. I didn't see the picture, but apparently they said it was just he was bow hunting, yeah, dead and on the you mm -hmm. know his his yeah. car, and so they were really freaked out by it, and they were like, you know. Saying you should be ashamed, how dare you? And like, or the dad was like, You're, you know, you're the what the talk of this neighborhood or the focus. The, <laughs> like that. It was yeah. just very demeaning and shaming. And the guy was like, I'm gonna eat it, I hunted it to eat it. And he's like, what? <laughs> He's like, What am I doing? He's not threatening anybody, he wasn't, he didn't hurt anybody, he was literally just getting that deer. Right. And then, like, taking it home, and they're just like, what? So. <laughs> so. Well, it seems like the uh, YouTube live stream may have been ended. Why? So let's see here. Oh, from the uh, cell phone? Let's see. Wow. So is that the battery or something? Or? I don't know. Let's find out. It still says recording, though. That's weird. Hmm. Well, I don't know. How long was that? That was, uh, cause this was a, a new device. So we were testing out to see if it was, uh, how, or how long it would last on the new, on the new GoPro. So Facebook, you're still with us, but, uh, oh wow. It's actually still going live, even though I just pulled it. That's weird. Whoa, that's crazy. So apparently, all right. So this Sasquatch is, is like, is it a magazine party again? Yes. That's it why is a ma magazine mags. party again. <laughs> So I will fill these mags as we go. <laughs> and for every super chat. Whoa. So it's crazy, but apparently. Oh, Y'all still here. Okay. Th I, that's so weird, but have, literally. Oh, so your app is just. Oh, wow. <laughs> Load and drink. Oh, my goodness. Sasquatch oh, just came on. Um, cheers to you. That's a really cool name, by the way. That is really that cool because I legit don't even know how to end this live stream if we wanted to <laughs> because this is all new software again. So like we're using the new, the latest GoPro that just came out to live stream Facebook. So we're, we're on YouTube with that and it's still going even though the app just went down. So I don't even know how this is working. <laughs> okay. Honestly. All right. Well, I got to rack one. Thank you. We'll rack it. We'll just <laughs> keep going until somehow it stops. Right, so I, guess. I will color this. Okay. It won't even let me connect, so I don't even know. Weird. That's crazy, dude. This is supposed to be gold. Well, here we are. <laughs> here we are. So, let me see. I'm going to take a look at Facebook comments in the meantime. <laughs> well, I can... Isn't harvesting animals humanely better than them being ripped apart by wolves or slowly starving as many animals in the wild do? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because it, it's true. Like, Ooh. you know, if you have, like, like watch uh, National Geographic, that shit is brutal. Organic farming. That uh, stuff's brutal. Like, at least humans can think of a, try to think and try to think of, okay, how can I make this more humane or quick or painless? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But in the animal world, ugh. Crocodiles, they rip you apart. It's brutal. It hurts. It's slow. It's. It's not pretty, folks. Like, that stuff's happening all the time. And I've talked to vegans who, when debating them, I'm like, okay, so to apply your principle consistently, does that mean um, <laughs> that you would uh, think it's okay to, like, kill a lion while he's trying to get food? And you recognize, like, the only thing they eat is, like, you know, meat. 
so. I mean, the only thing I see is, like, when it comes to... I, I think animals should be treated like um, could be humans' property, you know? Like, don't steal an animal because it's someone's actual property. Mm-hmm. Like, they trained oh, yeah. it, they bought the animal, they breeded it, or whatever. It's right. their pet. Don't eat it. Don't eat someone's pet, but, I mean... <sighs> If it was a wild dog, I'm just saying, like, and it wasn't owned, I'm just saying. (laughs) And if you have to eat. And what about those people who, like, you know, don't really have access to um, whatever, or they're facing, like, you know, an embargo or whatever, like, uh, or, uh, I'm sorry, that's not the right word. I apologize. Oh, is it not embargo? It's, um, (laughs) (laughs) forgot the word. I don't even know. I just don't even know how we're on YouTube right now because I don't know either. It's literally, it literally disconnected, Welcome but it still says world. live. Okay. So GoPro I had to do Hero right, Eight, the you, Sasquatch. Cheers you're gonna to have you. To. Yeah. He cheers to Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Thank you you're for awesome. your support. That will help us continue for the Red Flag Reality thing. Um, on a separate you're day. one of the people who made this GoPro possible. That's still recording, even though the app is done. And the GoPro has been great. It's really cool. I like how it like shows a lot more of the table. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm excited how this is to make end stuff up. here. I have no idea how we're gonna end it. What at what some point? I don't even know. <coughs> Let's see. Someone here. else is a meat eater. <coughs> <laughs> how do you like your steak? <coughs> well done. Medium or medium rare. rare. <laughs> or rare. Yeah. Some people are like, I like it close to bloody, like just seared. <laughs> you know, like barely seared, as raw as possible. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of good. Mm. <laughs> Anywho. Anywho, you got a whole Magda rack, so that's Thank you, the Sasquatch. I <laughs> spotted the Sasquatch for the first time in my life. Alright. Okay, anyway. <laughs> You're like, alright. Alright. This is really cool. So hmm. this, for those of you who don't know, we've had this hmm. out for like the past... So it's a... It's mess how we eat mammals, but all they do is eat grass. And I'm like... If you think all mammals do is eat grass, you got... You've probably been in the city for too long because seriously, mammals that are even herbivores literally can kill other animals. Like, if you think they're like all just, you know, lovey-dovey, like you watch Bambi and that's like, oh, that's that's how animals live. You've been out of the forest for way too long because like literally the they can kill other animals. Again, even herbivores can kill other animals. They can stampede them. They can stomp them. They can, you know... Uh, Bucks have you know antlers. They can gore them. Um, <laughs> they can step on them. Do you, you know, see just accidentally. what happens to poor little Woo! rabbits? Uh, like yeah. vultures, eagles grab them. Yeah, it's uh, the reality is. At least is we that... took pictures with them before we ate them. <laughs> <laughs> the reality is, is that you, you just can't hold them to the same standard. It's just an abs- it's a pure absurdity. And they shouldn't be because you you can't expect or put a, a, a moral or ethical expectation yeah. on those kinds of creatures. Now again, but you nothing... can create cultural movements. And right. That's there's nothing happening. wrong with voluntary. People already movements. voluntarily go vegan. So right. Cool. I mean, great. But they're not initiating violence. They're just like, hey, I just think this is healthier for me, and also I find alternatives. Or there are companies that are trying to make meat without actually having. Uh, you know, a full animal. Like, they want to grow the meat in a lab. Right, so you get cancer with your animal. Yeah. <laughs> Someone Wait, actually really? said here in the uh, in, <laughs> in uh, L.A. County, the animal rights activists pushed for the banning of, of hunting mountain lions, and they got their way, but the government still hunts the mountain lions for population control. Hmm, I wonder why. Yeah, because certain animals, because of human impact, might have a higher breeding ability, and if they are not controlled, that is hunted they can get to the point where you have a lot of them and they start to go into your, you know, suburban areas or they start to uh, go onto the roads at night and then suddenly you have car accidents and people are dying. So again, it, you know, this all these different problems are, you know, are just right for market solutions. Uh, but when you get the government in the way, <laughs> you, you obfuscate the reality. Nice. The Sasquatch. I like <laughs> that. That's really you. fancy. So that's you. I'll choose a different so. pen color for the next match. <laughs> Someone said we can't put the standards on them, but we can put the standards on ourselves. Well, see, that's the problem, though, is that when you say put the standards on yourself, right, 
what are we talking about? If you're just saying voluntary self-choice, sure, of course, anybody can choose to be vegan or choose to be vegetarian, whatever, it's fine. But when we talk, we're talking about law or the enforcement of you know human action in terms of violence. Yeah, we're talking about something that is absolutely horrific. It is the genocide of human beings as a species. It is literally the escalation of violence against human beings. So yeah. you can't be for uh, you know this this kind of like principled ethical treatment of animals. And also be for that for humans, because what you're really doing is saying, well, we want to we want to give preference to human on human violence, because none of these people who are you know talking about this are saying to go and end the lives of all predators or yeah, all carnivores. That's true. They're not saying let's go kill they, every. In creature. fact, they say the opposite. Like I was right. saying before, they make exceptions. They, uh, so they they usually yeah. say no, you're interfering with them. Mm-hmm. I'm like what? So in other words, it's so not it's not a moral rule. separate standards. So you yeah. want to hold humans to different standards like right. why are you treating humans differently it's just if, human and human if violence. everyone is equal yeah. and the nap should apply to all species of animals uh consistently mm. why are you not applying right. it consistently so yeah that that's usually the issue mm. that i find is inconsistency and like you pointed out earlier right. the performative contradiction so and someone said are you aware of high impact impact flicks okay time to write you woke me up to voluntarism yes i'm actually uh <laughs> Facebook friends them well, so and I've been following for a long time so you can really see the rack on the table. Yeah, you hear Facebook? that Facebook? Facebook, you can see this rack. So again, <laughs> if you want to see the rack, go on YouTube. There's a link in the comments. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can really watch this rack happen. All right, you ready? <laughs> um, I'll be the pressure here. Okay, the pressure. The pressure. All right, wish me luck. Yeah. Philosopher. Philosopher. <laughs> Yes. Shoot it. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm like, fun ice. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, so that was really satisfying. And, um, you know, well, you I think show I off got a work. little stronger. Show off your work. This is a beautiful contraption. I didn't make this. I mean, look at how it lays in there. It also has a little screen. It's plastic. And uh, you can see that it's fully loaded. And that's really cool. So thank you, the Sasquatch. It's actually supposed to be like this. So, and you can see how close the drawing I made is to the real thing. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. <laughs> okay, yep. then I drew the thing. <laughs> so here we are. Here we are. Thank you, the Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, this will be fun to go and, uh, try this out. You know, I only ever saw firearms in movies, so it's really fun, honestly, to finally mm -hmm. try it out. Oh, and yeah. I can't help but think of all the pictures and movies of people I've seen, you know, defending their loved ones. Speaking of people with guns <laughs> and defending, Cody Wilson apparently decided to join back with Defense yeah. Distributed. Wow. Yeah. So that's interesting. That's going to be very interesting. I'm pretty sure they're not going to let him near a computer because everything he types is key logged under, oh, wow. his, under his probation. Wow. But I imagine he's giving direction on what they should do. That's really interesting. You know, it's, uh, I mean, his whole situation was crazy. I personally, again, this is just my opinion. I think it's quite possible that the girl who he met up with was, um, already an informant with the police because it was way too convenient you know this it was a girl who was 16 lied to get on an adult website that literally you have to say i'm 18 to join she him messages him she sent him nudes and under texas law that's actually a crime so she's actually guilty of creating child pornography yet only he got charged she didn't get charged yeah. You would expect that, okay, if, if this is truly a criminal thing and she was independent, um, she should be charged too. She cre she broke the law as well, but yet she wasn't. So the fact that she wasn't and the fact that you know Cody got a plea deal leads me to believe that maybe they wanted to stop the case um, because if they went forward with it, it might expose the fact that she actually may have been uh, working at the behest of police to go after Cody, 
which, you know, again, Cody, I think, was unwise um, <laughs> to be using such sites. It's, it's kind of silly to me. I, I don't see... You know what I mean? He could have gotten all the libertarian posts he wanted, but... Or even girls with, like, guns. Right. It, I don't even know how he did that. It's just It just seems silly, but some people... I don't know. You know, if you're going to be in that public spotlight, he you need well to... He was well-spoken, too. Wasn't like... He did, yeah. Well, I mean, he, but he did intimate what he was up to because he said... And he got, you know, very bold in some, po you know, podcast interviews oh, talking yeah, about yeah. his stuff. And, yeah, it's just, you know, I mean, it's just as, like, you got to just be aware and stay above reproach. If you're going to be that public of a figure, you know, you can't be going around and thinking you could just go on some, like, adult website for, like, hookups and stuff and think you're not going to get targeted by police or feds. I mean, it's just silly. Like, I don't know. I think that was a blind spot for him, so hopefully he does better, but... Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm excited to see at least where it goes from here. So that's cool. He's joining back. No yeah. matter what capacity, like, wasn't he the CEO or something? Oh, he's the creator. He's literally the founder. Yeah. He's the one who made it. But so is that the same? That's that's really cool. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, the Overstock CEO. We were watching that really very surreal. <laughs> yeah, Pat Bird with Overstock. Yeah, where was yeah. he on Fox? He's like, I was helping the FBI, and, you know, yeah. I was doing it because of a good citizen, and then I realized they were spying <laughs> on Trump. I mean, I don't know. That, to, to me, on its own, it's, it's just so, so weird. But, I mean, supposedly, otherwise, he was, you know, a big proponent of crypto and libertarianism and stuff, but... Why are these people all talking to feds? I mean, what the heck is up with that? It's just ridiculous. Like, you, should, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing good that's going to come from that. Like, there's just <laughs> nothing good. Do not. Get get a lawyer. Okay. You know, remain silent. Like, you know, it's, it's just nothing good is going to come from involving yourself with the government. Even when you want to do good. And I can tell you this from firsthand. Here's a, here's a good story, right? So when I was in, in law school, actually, um, my, uh, sad, I'm sorry, the uh, ex at the time, the uh, <laughs> the person I was walking down the what? street. So we discovered a purse, and the purse um, had clearly been stolen because everything was emptied except, I think, just oh, yeah. just an ID. And so we get the campus police to set and call up, say, "Hey, look, we found this purse on the side. You know, could you come get it?" So they come get it, and then. As we're walking away, this guy, you know, the cop on a, a four-wheeler just drives right in front of us, almost hitting us. And he's like, oh, by the way, I, I want your information. We're like, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And story. you know what I mean? Like, we're the ones who called to help someone who got their purse stolen get back at least the material bag and their ID. You know, everything else is gone. But then they're treating us like suspects. And he's like, and I'm like, and he's like, oh, I'm going to arrest you. Because I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not giving you my information. You have no right to it, you know. And he got all pissy and stuff. And my, you know, my ex thing, because she was an RA at the school, but it, it was just insane. It was, it was a reminder that even when you try to do good, like you try to just, you know, okay, maybe give me this to lost and found at the, you know, campus police, you know, maybe this girl will get contact and they'll get her purse back at least. They, they still, you know, the police there were trying to treat you like, you know, you're an evil criminal. So, you know, that was one of my many police interactions that really um, awakened me to the nature of, of what police do. And of course, you know, actually practicing criminal defense. Um, you know, definitely got to see how uh, bad it was, so. Yeah. Yeah. So it said it's Cody free. Yeah, Cody Wilson's free on probation for like six years, plus he has to register on the typing. sex, sex offend, uh, offender registry for those years and has all his, you know, his uh, internet activities, keystroke log. Wow. Uh, yeah, but so he, don't interview he's him free. anytime soon. Yeah, don't interview him anytime soon. Don't, yeah, send him Sorry, snail mail, to, you know what I mean, or, yeah. or meet him in person. But yeah, yeah. forget about that. Yeah. Don't, don't send him a text, don't send him an email. It's not going to be good, sadly. So, yeah, so, so said Brian said, You are always a potential suspect. I know that's true. It's you're always a potential suspect with police, and that and that's a big problem is that. A lot of people don't realize that, uh, you know, when it comes to police, their role is to put you in jail. They're the executive branch. They're there to enforce the laws. And very often the laws are just so outlandish or misconstrued that police are going to just try to find 
you know, way to put you in jail, even if you didn't do anything, and they'll just make it up along the way and then try to find a statute after that they can just, you know, figure out how to charge you. It's crazy. Yeah. So, you know. Um, on a random note, sorry, random topic, but yeah. one way you could handle if you really wanted people to, um, you know, not hurt animals, <sighs> I think you help create the incentives. Just give them alternatives. Like that company, for example, that's trying to make lab-grown meats okay, hopefully it doesn't have cancer, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, that's, I'm just saying that's an alternative and hopefully it works out. I mean, some people, they'll feel better about that, whatever. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> some people <laughs> might, probably not though, because someone's going to then argue, well, if you grow tissue in a lab, maybe it feels pain somehow. It's just, it's nuts, and that's the, and that's the fundamental problem is that you can always find exceptions if you don't actually have a consistent principle. You know, you know, it's something that is so crucially important. I think more than ever, it's so crucially important to recognize that the first priority, that is the number one thing that should be the forefront of our, that is human beings' minds, is how can we at least achieve peace among humans? You know, forget about everything else. We're just struggling to try to get peace among humans. With 260 million people killed in the 20th century alone with wars and violence and, and just, you know, genocide and democide. I mean, we're just trying to get humans to have peace. Yeah. Forget about the animals that part. We can deal with the animal stuff after the human part, but forget it. I mean, you're not going to get to the human piece if you're busy trying to figure out how to do more violence <laughs> for animals. I mean, you're not going to help anybody get to more peace. Because you're, you're wrapped up with something that you're not meaningfully changing. Because you're not meaningfully killing all the carnivores. So it just stop the fake moralizing, the fake outrage. It's, it's ridiculous. Focus on how you can build peace in your own home, your family, your relationships, the people you love. How can you be a peaceful parent? How can you, you know, transfer that to the next generation? Because that part, if you don't do that, forget about the future. We're all going to be enslaved. To a freaking you know government that has like near ai you know technology to put everybody into registries and then just kill everybody you know with whatever means they're going to you know do whether they use red flag laws or come up with some excuse for martial law i mean so you can forget yeah. about the animals there the animals will be living in peace while you know you're dead so you know yeah, usually don't even waste your time go after all the animals so yeah yeah uh, so here we are. Here we are trying to promote liberty uh, one humans. day at a time. It's like humans yeah. who want to live in peace versus humans who want to control and just seize all the means. <laughs> oh man. But yeah. Someone asked, should ANCAPs get involved in the Libertarian Party or Mises Caucus or something like that? It's a good question. I mean, I personally, of course, I, I hate politics at, at large. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm very anti political. Do I value, though, certain groups that are doing good things and messaging? Yes. Like, for example, I do appreciate the Mises Caucus in that their goal is not necessarily, oh, we just want to run candidates to win. Their goal is actually to educate and change people's minds. And be principled. And be principled. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a, that's a big yeah. difference. It's, there's a big difference between we're going to play politics and pander, and we're just here to educate people and change minds. And if we win an election great but we're here to tell people here's how you can be more ethical here's how you can be a better parent here's how you can understand economics better here's how you can um better advance you know your your first and second amendment rights you know when i say that i'm not saying the government gives you rights i'm just saying you know conceptually what people hear in the political realm you know about speech and about guns i mean that really is more important than anything it's, it's empowering people to meaningfully use employ and defend their fundamental rights so that's you know that's the extent of my personal political activism is, is just that it's people who are out there educating and changing minds that's it you know what i mean i don't care about yeah. winning offices or anything like that it's all garbage and ethically as far as i'm concerned but it's it's the um it's the act of helping people become better more ethical human beings and sharing that with others and changing and using minds. it as a platform too right like Absolutely. Ron Paul did. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he talks about his time in Congress for, what, 30 years? And he's just like, did much change? No, in fact, things got no, really yeah, bad. Things got worse. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <got> worse. Yeah. <laughs> he left and gave his, like, you know, speech that y'all should watch. Yeah. That was just like, here's all the things that are really bad. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
And that, that's the thing. It's like no matter what, you know, politics is not going to save you. That, at the end of the day, but he a changed a lot of minds. Save you. Right. And that was invaluable. It's what he so did. So many in people, speaking. Yeah. And, and what's fascinating, so many yeah. people um, who are anarchists, like you go on Anarchast, you look at interviews, uh, like Jeff Burt was like, "Oh, how'd you become, you know, an anarchist?" A lot of them are like, "Oh, Ron Paul. I heard of right. Ron Paul, and he was saying these things that no one else was, and I." Uh, I just looked him up more and started mm. researching what he said and Ron Paul would bring up like Austrian economics and Mises and Rothbard, you know, right uh, to the general public. So, hey, if you have the time, money, mental energy, will to do that and play <laughs> politics and smile and do all that. Right. You know, like, I mean, I wish you the best. Be principled and focus on educating first and foremost. And, hey, if you win, uh, yeah, we're going to be like, cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not about the winning. It's about it's about the mind's change. You know what I mean? Yeah. The people in that culture. That, that's what needs to change right. anyway. If you have, I don't know, if you, like, some people are like, okay, let me just pander and lie mm -hmm. that, and not be a true principled libertarian in rhetoric. And then just once I get in power, then I'll be a principled libertarian. And I'm like, no, now you've soiled uh, libertarians and made it seem like uh, libertarians are liars. And you know what I mean? Right. Like It just, you will make people mad because you lied to them and you like defrauded them. Mm. And you're like, oh, I believe in this, but you don't, you know? Right. So like, I don't like that approach either, which I've seen. Mm. And really quick, Sasquatch says good night, y'all. Thanks, Aww, Sasquatch. Thanks, Sasquatch. Thank you for uh, your support. That was very kind of you. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you. Thanks for the man. <laughs> yeah. So, I it's like a, loading it up. Yeah, loading it up's fun. So, if anybody wants to <laughs> I get another mag going <laughs> and support, funny. again, proceeds go toward helping to get the uh, Red Flag Reality Project going if you do want to support that, as always. That's our next big thing, and that's, you know, as far as, you know, we're concerned, that's it. Like, if the government gets uh, these red flag laws across every state, I personally do believe that it will be used to kill off, literally, um, all the people who love liberty. Um, it's going to be used as a political tool. Um, it will. You will see red flags true. be essentially as... The Gestapo in Nazi Germany. As it's, we've seen. We are seeing what is the um, beginnings to that next level of Holocaust. Um, Just like in China. Yeah. They Beca have their yeah. groups of people so. of ideas that they hate that they think yep. uh, threaten their rule. So what do they do? They send them literally to a uh, uh, concentration camp in like yeah. horrible places. Um, yeah. And yeah, just violate them. It's, it's pretty wild but yeah. I think we'll uh, go on ahead and wrap it on up so it's been a lot <laughs> of fun hanging out with you late on this Friday night pretty late dude. cheers to everybody <laughs> cheers everyone thanks and for special thanks out. to the Sasquatch for his and supporting the super chats yeah you're awesome I hope it was fun and uh, if you guys want to see more, if you want to support the next video, just go to thephilosopher.com slash support. And uh, if you want to check out volunteers. Yeah, well, more than anything, you know, just stay tuned for the, the Red Flag Reality Project. Stay tuned. Yeah, you we know, should have an update for, for, in a couple weeks. Yeah, we're going to, we'll make a video specifically for that, of course. But it's, um, it's something that we're really passionate about. And we just want to make sure gets out there before this upcoming election, just because... So, so many people are, are hearing oh. all the wrong things. They're hearing that, oh, if you don't ban ARs, it's just mass murder in America and it's crazy. And it's, you know, the reality is, is that red flag laws and this new form of gun control actually is the mass murder. And we want to just communicate that. So. Of peaceful gun owners. Right. Yeah. Oh, bye everyone. Good night, <laughs> yeah. So to all our fellow peaceful gun owners, or even if you're not a gun owner, just a peaceful person right. who wants freedom. Ugh. Cheers to you. Cheers. <laughs> I'm going to see if this will even work. Until next time. We'll find